We all have heard about serverless compute, how AWS Lambda works and how it is so amazing it's serverless and it executes your code and it shuts down and all that stuff. But let's just spend some time in order to understand how serverless compute really works. In this video, I'm going to take example of AWS Lambda, which is one of the most popular serverless services out there in the world, let alone in the AWS world itself. Let's go. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. So before I get started with AWS, let's discuss a little bit about serverless. First of all, serverless essentially means that you are running your code without you worrying about servers. Somebody always has to worry about servers, right? Serverless only means that you have offloaded that to the cloud provider. In case of Lambdas, to the AWS, right? Serverless doesn't mean there are no servers. Servers are always there. That's how computers work by making use of computers. But serverless means that you don't have to worry about them. Now, a typical structure of an AWS Lambda would work like this. So let's say this is your Lambda code, right? You have your computer over here where you used to code this whole stuff and then you upload your code to AWS, right? Now you can upload it directly as a zip file. You can write your type your code in the AWS UI itself. You can pretty much do it in a number of ways. Once your code is uploaded, this is stored on AWS servers, right? Now, the fun part begins where you are able to attach handlers to this AWS, right? Now these handlers or these events are some triggers which AWS uses internally to trigger your Lambda, right? What do I mean by that? These triggers could be cron jobs. So for example, let's say you want a good morning email from yourself, from your computer on 6 a.m. every day, right? Your, your time zone. So you can set up a cron job which runs an AWS Lambda trigger which sends an SES email which is another service from AWS every 6 a.m., right? So this is how you can configure that. Another one is obviously HTTP. For example, there could be multiple cron triggers. One more I can think of is S3 file upload, for example. So HTTP is pretty much, I think, the most common one where you would go ahead and, you know, have an endpoint like API slash ABC, for example, or slash GraphQL, whatever. And whenever somebody visits that endpoint, this Lambda gets triggered. Similarly, for S3 upload, you might have a bucket or anything where you upload something, then that Lambda gets triggered with the information about that S3 file and you know, you can work with that. All right, this is like the generic overview of how the Lambda works. Let's go a little bit deep into one of these use cases. And then finally, we'll go all into the Lambda's infrastructure itself. The way HTTP works right now is that it usually works behind something known as API Gateway. An API Gateway is, you can think of, not exactly as a load balancer, but kind of. I mean, this is like a pretty solid load balancer, not anywhere close to what AWS offers as a load balancing service. That is the Elastic Load Balancer. But API Gateway is a good start. So any request, R1, R2, all these requests coming on, you know, certain path, for example, slash GraphQL, these can be mapped to your single AWS Lambda instance, right? Or, you know, if you're running Lambda Edge, that's a different story. And then whatever you want to do, all sorts of processing, whether that's communicating with some database inside a VPC or, you know, having some SQS queuing system, you can do that and return the response and that will go to that individual client. Now, this is interesting, but let's understand how AWS Lambda works internally. Now, if you had to guess how AWS Lambdas work internally, if I give you two options, the first one is containerization. The second one is virtualization. That is running a VM, virtual machine, and then running your Lambda inside it. Which one would you choose? Pause this video for a couple of seconds and think about it. And I'm going to go ahead and give you an answer in a couple of seconds. All right. So the funny thing about AWS is you might think that because Lambdas needs to be so fast and you know, have a great response time and they boot up so quickly as well. They have to be containers, right? Just like Docker containers. But the actual fact is that Lambdas are not containers. They are actually virtual machines. And this, this is like a, this is like a, you know, a fact which should blow your mind if you know that containers sound like a much better option in terms of speed and performance. But virtual machine is not a right word, I would say. It's kind of like a micro virtual machine. Why? Because AWS 
developed their own infrastructure known as Firecracker. So Firecracker is the micro virtual machine infrastructure by AWS which allows them to create these small micro VMs in which the Lambda runs. Now the reason why Lambda does not use something like containers, Docker containers and instead rely on booting up a full-blown virtual machine is because virtual machines are obviously more secure than containers right and at a scale when you're operating at an AWS like scale when pretty much most of the people know about this service and are using it at some point you cannot just give away a lot of attack surface area right and that is something which happens when you're running containers so this is the reason why aws prefers to stick with virtual machines because they are more secure in the sense that i mean docker containers and containers in general are also secured but they still share a lot of kernel space right so if you want to create that diagram where it shares that stuff you will see that obviously virtual machines offer more segregated access compared to containers that is why i i believe i mean i don't obviously know why the internally aws uses vm still but that is one strong reason to use virtual machines because they provide more sandbox more secure access and you cannot be actually not thinking about security at a scale at which aws operates because a single kernel bug which is like exploited in the wild and might not be patch you know for example these spectre and meltdown which were discovered a couple of years back i think in intel they could be like disastrous for a company like aws which is hosting like tens of hundreds of thousands of multiple enterprise clients which rely on top level security but the good thing about firecracker is that unlike a traditional vm inside your vmware which might take a minute or a couple of minutes to boot this is actually fast and mostly like you know on par with speed with containers as well that's why you would see that most of the crying out of people is when they see that hey my aws lambda takes one to two seconds of cold boot time or cold start times and i mean that's that's pretty awesome if you think about booting a full-blown virtual machine in a couple of seconds right but that's fine but there is a layer of another optimization which helps here and that is that aws does not shut down your lambda so let's say your first request comes and the lambda is created from start from scratch in a couple of seconds then what aws would do is that it will keep this lambda around for a while right this lambda exists and this might exist for a few minutes this might exist for a few seconds it depends on aws internal details we don't have much info about that and internal details and the demand supply thing but this probably is not a bad idea to consider that it will exist for at least two to four plus minutes right after the initial creation phase now while it is existing this lambda can actually obviously this can be frozen in the sense that the state of this lambda is frozen but it can maintain all those tcp connections and everything which was established once right for example if you are connecting to a mongodb or an atlas which we do at codan this connection would be there right this connection would be maintained and can be reused if there's another request coming in right and the benefit of this is because this container or this virtual machine not container is already booted up you're gonna have a very fast response time right because this is booted up the connection is also established it's pretty much like you're pinging or you know connecting with an ec2 instance right but this time this is serverless so you don't have to manage the hardware and then finally whenever aws thinks that is suitable to tear it down it tears down this lambda and whenever the next trigger happens it will reconstruct that again thanks to the firecracker virtualization technology it can be done almost immediately so this is how aws lambda the serverless compute works i hope you learned something new about virtualization why aws does not use containers how it uses a firecrack virtual firecracker virtual machine and links are in the description if you want to learn more about firecracker and so on but if you did learn something new make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel 
help the algorithm boost the video, help get code down to more people. That is all for this one. I'm gonna see you in the next video really soon. If you're still watching this video, make sure you comment down in the comment section. I watched this video till the end. Also, if you're not part of Code Dump's Discord community, you're missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code. You already know the drill. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and thank you so much for watching.